Dry eye overall is a very common condition that many people experience of all ages. Um, it's a disease that affects the quality of the tear production in the eye. This can happen from a number of different causes. So our eye itself has um, many components to what we call the ocular surface. We have uh, a part of the eye that produces tears. Um, we also have a part of the eye that produces an oil type substance that also um, will help with the integrity of the tear film. Any disruption to any part of our ocular surface can lead to dry eye. So this can include excessive computer use, um, it can include certain medications, it can include certain activities, certain environments, a uh, decrease in humidity. So in the summer, um, for example, dry, July being dry eye month, uh, many people experience dry eye because of the air conditioning in their homes um, and they don't realize that that lack of humidity can um, exacerbate dry eye symptoms and make people very symptomatic. So many people think of dry eye as, as being just that, a dryness feeling in the eye, um, grittiness, irritation. Those are certainly characteristic symptoms of dry eye. But what people don't realize is that dry eye can also cause an excessive watering, so tearing of the eye, light sensitivity, redness, even an itchiness in the eyes itself can be caused by dry eye. So any discomfort um, in the eye should be investigated for dry eye disease. Even um, after a long day at the computer, just a feeling of fatigue in the eye can be a component of dry eye as well. Dry eye is something that uh, is a little bit hard to kind of get on top of or even prevent. Um, probably the best thing to do is to get routine eye exams so that the signs of the disease can be identified before somebody starts to necessarily have symptoms that are very bothersome to them. Um, but um, in the instance that somebody is experiencing an irritation or dryness to the eyes, let's say after a long day at the computer or or a long day on their tablet. Um, what One thing we always recommend um, that many people feel comfort from is a, a hot, moist cloth over their eyes. Um, that and artificial tear use are sort of the beginning steps. And then from there, if that's not enough to get rid of the symptoms, then there's a lot of different options that are available. Um, we do dry eye in two different ways here at the university. We do have a research center that is um, aimed at uh, answering research questions and um, so people can participate in, in a various types of, of different research. We also have a dry eye clinic um, within our clinical um, services that we offer here at the, the Waterloo Eye Institute. And so if somebody is referred here, they can either be um, self-identified as somebody is having dry eye. Usually they are referred from their primary care optometrist up to our clinic. Um, once they're referred, usually what we find helpful is for them to do a variety of dry eye imaging. So we can assess the tear film, we can assess um, the quality of the tears and just get a really good sense as to why that person is experiencing dryness. Then from there, um, they'll see the optometrist, the doctor that uh, is working in the dry eye clinic and a few more measurements, a few more questions will be asked to really understand how the dry eye is impacting their day, daily life and their day-to-day -day activities, and a personalized treatment plan can be developed from there.